Florida. The fabulous west coast of Florida, an enchanting corner of America where thousands come and return again to bathe in year-round sunshine. Pinellas County is historically a place where people return because they want to keep reliving their pleasant memories, their time off, you know, their time away from the grind, and this is what they pleasantly remember, the sun shining on them. It's a very easygoing lifestyle here. Indian Rocks was known as the playground of Tampa's rich. And because we had that bridge that was built here 100 years ago, people would come by train or take all day to come by car, and they would come to Indian Rocks before they would go to any other beaches. And back in the 60s and 70s, there were over 550 small properties in Pinellas County, 550 small mom and pop motel type properties. When I look at today's world in Indian Rocks and all of our beaches compared to what it was 20 years ago, it, we really have lost a lot of these beautiful little cottages. This is a story about saving some of those historic hidden treasures. Save Our Cottages, Artists with a Cause. Growing up in old Florida, I remember all the woods and all the beaches that only had little small cottages in front of the beaches. So as you rode down the street, you always saw the water, you always saw the ocean, and it was so beautiful. I enjoy having that, that, that history, although more and more of it seems to be disappearing. I remember summers coming over here when I was going through graduate school and staying in these gorgeous beach cottages. And so we would drive up Gulf Boulevard in the 60s and 70s, and what you saw there were a lot of the mom and pop hotels, and you also saw a lot of beach cottages out there. It was what I call BC, before condominiums. Before spring break was all the rage, before Florida became a Disney destination, for many Floridians, the beaches along the West Coast were simple summertime getaways. As Indian Rocks Beach began to develop in the 30s and 40s and up through the 50s, people from the north, very often, if they could afford it, built little cottages in the south for them to come to during the winter months. Some of the oldest cottages are built right here in Indian Rocks Beach, and a lot of them. These homes have a story all their own. I always say if these walls could talk, you know, I love to know the history of the home. Here, Sarah's Seaside, there's eight cottages here. Some were built, uh, 1910 is the oldest, 1920s, 1940. So they're all a little bit different. And each week we build a community. The best part is when the sun starts setting and then it cools off. Uh... I'm from uh, Minneapolis, from Plymouth, Minnesota. And uh, we're here because we, we just scouted around for some place to stay and really like these small cottages. In the 80s, the condos were newer and shinier, difficult for us to compete with. While some condos have very nice views and nice amenities, some of them look very cookie cutter. The condo kind of became a place you could be almost anywhere, didn't feel special. Whereas a cottage, even if you have cottages that are a similar architectural style, they often have enough unique features that they define themselves as great living places and unique entities. Well, like in all beach communities, they're tearing them down. Uh, people are tearing down historic old cottages and building condos. When people buy the properties and they'll either replace a cottage with a bigger house or a condo will come in. If you're a cottage and you have a 10-story condo on either side of you, you really don't get direct sunlight any longer, so you're kind of overshadowed by the big giants on either side. The condos are the Great Wall of Florida. I think she's referring to the Condo Canyon. And when you drive down Gulf Boulevard, all you see are buildings coming up almost towards the edge of the street right now. When you tear down the last small cottage and replace it with the final condo you can fit on the land, you've lost something at the end of the day. Armed with paintbrushes and pallets, meet the least likely warriors in the battle to save the beach cottages. My name is Mary Rose Holmes, and I'm a plein air cottage artist. I live in Indy Rocks Beach. I started painting very young and getting painting lessons. My name is Helen Tilston, and I'm an artist. 
I started when I was about four years of age. I grew up in Ireland and we had a farm right by the ocean, about 10 miles was our property. My name is Violeta Chandler. I was born uh, not too far from the Black Sea, which was at that time was uh, Soviet Union. And I'm fifth generation fine artist. When I moved to Indian Rocks Beach 20 years ago, I met Violetta and Helen. We started painting those cottages. We were all painting out together, giving each other advice, critiques, and that's when I started thinking about it. What started as merely a passion for painting transformed into a cause, the artist's style and strokes becoming the voice for the threatened beach cottages. Plein air painting is painting outside. Going outside and painting means that you see the light. You see so many things that you don't see in a photograph. The um, sights, the sounds, uh, the smells, the atmosphere, the color. You, you connect them to, to, um, to the nature, you, you're part of it. They're great for the community because of the way they are visible in such a stylish way and sort of a mysterious way when people see them on the side of Gulf Boulevard with their easels and their flowing clothes and people are like, who is that and what are they doing? They're just really gentle people that want to preserve what these cottages are. Violetta and Helen are painting and this man stopped as he drove by and he, Violetta was painting a really big painting. He could see it from the road. He said, where is that? I want to go there. And Violetta said, you're here, look. And he was so cute, he said, you've taken the fog off my eyes. Those cottages that we first started painting, they were supposed to be demolished. They were trying to get the community aware that we were losing so many of our cottages. The city of Indian Rock Beach was given variances for each cottage that was demolished. Those are the ones that we painted the most from every angle, every perspective, from every possible size of a canvas. We went to um, three cottages here that were getting ready to be torn down. So we were painting like mad. The developers were coming. Painted verticals, painted horizontal, painted triptychs, we painted singles. We've done it all, and those are still there, and they're still gorgeous. And that's really how they became well known, as the Save Our Cottage artists. Once you smash a cottage, you can't get another one. That's what amazes me, that we really um, opened eyes. The cottage artists, have taken an approach that led the way for awareness and preservation. They absolutely did. They absolutely were the parents of the cause. I don't know, that's what some people say, and I think we helped stop it. And we raised the awareness. We didn't purposely set out to do this, but it is always nice to point out what's being done to an environment, if one can. Beach cottages are so important because there's just a few left of them. Our uniqueness is the fact that we retain the older aspects of our city and the historic aspects, instead of just wiping them out and constantly, you know, be putting something new in their place. I feel like that our paintings help to show this town and the tourists the beauty of the town. Plain air cottage artists keep on painting. We'll be grateful to them forever. I enjoy seeing them, seeing them painting, so keep on painting at the side of the road, yes. Keep painting, keep the preservation alive in our community. Thank you for your great work. Their cause continues. Learn more about preservation and the artists by going to the documentary website, savearcottagesdoc.org.